Is anybody there? I'll tell you what, now we got light in both directions. Here. Okay. We are live on Facebook. Welcome back, Judean Roundtable. It's been a while. We are here at the Aragot Farm in eastern Gush Etzion on top of That's the Judean desert. Also. We're about to get started on the show. This thing is awesome. Good, so we have so glad you can join us here on this Tuesday from beautiful Israel. If you can't see, don't worry, Yadaya is okay, uh, here. He's going to move around the phone. Man. No vulgarities. We are live, on, we are live guys. Whoever's live. watching on the Land of Israel Network, we are if live. you can hear us and you can see us, write a little message there. Let us know. Yeah, also here on my Facebook page. If the quality isn't good, if the sound isn't good, if you're not perfect. seeing everyone, we have somebody Everything behind the scenes who's going to test the audio here. I don't fix sure it. Can hear each other. So let's can see. Can you talk for a second? Hey, check one, two, three, four, five. Here we go. We got people oh, watching, here. guys. I'm just recording. Ari yes. Bramwitz here, the Arugot Farms. Right, let me just hear. It. Okay, no. I got. I All got right. Great mics with the plugs in the here. Yeah. yeah All right. It. Sounds great. Let's go. Let's do this. We're All right. All right, gentlemen. We're live. We're live. We're live here. here. It's good enough. All right. It's, it's good enough. It's good Ari, enough. take it's it away. Good. Ari, take All it away. Right. Ari, go sit over All right. Sit right. Sit right. Guys, the mic is there for me. Over there. I'll just. I'll stand right here. Go ahead. We're live. Because I'm sort of emceeing, right? No, no. Just sit over there. <laughs> ben Goldstein, should I sit over there? When you guys gotta go All right, in. so it's I'm windy right and it's beautiful. Can you see? Can people, can you see well, I'm just doing the introduction. No, Stop sit. being so controlling. <laughs> we're, we're live on my Facebook. We're live on, everyone. we're live on everyone's Facebook. Ignore these two lovebirds. Quar lovers quarrel over here. Just sit down. Just sit down. Just sit down. This guy. Speak up. Let's okay, go. so here we are at the Arugot Farms, southeastern tip of Judea. Four years ago, this place was desolate, empty, barren tumbleweeds. And now it is a Garden of Eden-like oasis, occupied by many of the greatest visionaries and leaders and spokespeople of the Jewish people, Jeremy excluded, and of course myself excluded as well. No, Jeremy included. He really is. But uh, we're about to start the Judean Round Table. Gedalia, who thought of that name? The Judean Round Table. It's epic. I wanted to do the chin wag. Remember the chin wag? Chin wag, yes. Yeah, yes, you wag your chin. Yes. But it was voted out, and I guess Judean Roundtable got yes. one. Yes. Yes. Wait, but more importantly, the first Judean Roundtable was here. That's right, the first Judean well, Roundtable was here. here. And here we are again, similar circumstances. Um, all right. Ben Goldstein, as usual, is ranting into his device. Ich bin dein So, uh. So just to let you know a little backstory, we're getting ready here, and I see Ben Goldstein. Every time I see like a karate ninjutsu master, I want to pop him in the face when he's not looking and be like, oh, how good are you? Bad idea. So I grab Ben Goldstein's gun to pull it out to like, he immediately grabbed my arm, flipped me around. Not a guy to mess with. MacGyver Goldstein here. Okay. Gentlemen, first of all, let's start Ezri Tubi. Awesome guy right here. Thank you. Look at the Land of Israel Network. Look at Josh Haston. Look around. Tell us just a moment about yourself and what you have started doing to radically contribute to the, uh, to the Am Yisrael at, at this critical time in our history. Okay, first of all, L'chaim, L'chaim. L'chaim, brother. I'm so glad to be with you fighters. I've been, you know, seeing you only on the screen, and now it's an opportunity for you and me to meet finally. And L'chaim, and this place is amazing. I don't know where you guys are watching from, but you, sh you should be here instead of in front of the screen. This is where it's happening, and these guys are making it happen. And I'm totally happy to be here, first of all. And I come from Samaria, it's pretty far away from here. I'm born and bred Israeli. Okay, so um, I'm from here, I'm from this area. I know my parents, they came from uh, Yemen. So, and what I've been starting in the last few years is I've opened an organization called Boomerang Fighting for Israel. I decided to be another fighter, to fight for my country, to fight for my people, to fight for my children. And, and fighting, my... you've been fighting in the field, which really this is a it's not a battle of weapons. This is a battle for the hearts and the minds. It's a battle mind. of ideas, and that's where Boomerang is fighting. And you've been putting out a weekly thing, right? Right. Putting out a weekly video about the terror attempts against Jews. And you know, even myself, I live in Samaria, and I'm here from the Judea and Samaria. And even my, I was not exposed to the extent of terror attacks against Jews. And when I, you know how it happened? I sat with a German uh, reporter in my office, and he came, of course, to make a report about how we settlers, I'm from Italy, you know, we're perceived to be bad guys. Um, and he came to make a report how the settlers are uh, harassing the poor uh, Palestinians, and he came to me to talk about it. 
And I told him, hold on, do you know the other way around? Do you know that we are constantly being attacked? And you see, he raised an eyebrow, no. And I said, you really don't know or you're just pretending? But whichever way I decided that if he says no and if other people do not know what is happening here, I want to show them. And when I started this weekly line, yeah, it's a weekly line showing the amount of attacks against Jews and bringing beautiful stories of people who were attacked. And when I started this line, I myself was amazed. We are talking about dozens of terror attacks, only the ones that are reported against Jews. Dozens of attacks that go you know, nobody reports about them. So it doesn't and, fit and, into the narrative. And People every little there. small hair that falls off an Arab, that's what I told him. He said, well, there are many attacks against Arabs. I told him every little hair that falls off an Arab, there's so many organizations that will make uh, headlines out of it. But when it comes to Jews, no. So I decided making a weekly line and showing people, yeah. That we'll, is beautiful. How do people find you, just I'm sorry? A boomerang fighting for Israel. Boomerang On Facebook? Fight, yeah, Facebook, YouTube, yes, boomerang fighting And let's for take Israel. a moment for a commercial break. Um, <laughs> my holy mother-in-law, Lily Cantor, made these brownies. Lily's brownies, incredible, <laughs> delicious. Part of the reason. I look as I do. But that's neither here nor there. You can find them on, where, where can we buy them? On, uh, uh, I don't think you can. You gotta come to Farms <laughs> and I'll ask my mother-in-law to make some brownies. But uh, they're delicious brownies. Anyways, okay. So let's start with uh, the low-hanging fruit, right? We've had missile attacks. I don't know, you guys late at night, if you have the red, red alert, you're sitting there having dinner, going to bed. <laughs> rockets falling, rockets falling on Israel. A home in Kfar Saba is hit, a direct hit. A uh, missile shot over Tel Aviv. The Hamas says we didn't mean to. Uh, it was uh, bad weather. They actually said that. Bad weather. It was a bad weather thing. So here's the question. The question I want to ask you guys and throw it out there. What is the deal here? Why is Hamas doing this? Is there a war being started? What's the proper response? It, it seems like it's usually they they shoot rockets and the whistles don't go down. Zimado, Zimado. No, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Ben no, Goldstein, didn't tell us about this. You, you notice right? his reaction? It was a complete <laughs> accident <laughs> that we fired this rocket towards Tel Aviv. Oops, we did it again. <laughs> We're sorry. This is an actual rocket from Gaza. It's a small rocket. It's extremely heavy. I'll, I'll probably die of tetanus, as Haston told me. But um, as you can see, this actual rocket here did hit in an open field by Kisufim. Kisufim is one of the hardest hit communities down south. Um, and what hit the house this week in Israel was around five times as big as this. It could have destroyed an entire building. These aren't fireworks. These are deadly projectiles meant to slaughter Jews in the land of Israel. And we're holding one right here, right now. This is from our friends in Gaza, and this is what happens when we give them land, territory, and money. They turn it into this crap. You know they have these rockets for roses kind of things? These, yeah. They should do rockets into, into bongs. Put it here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a cool bong. If I, if I was still a teenager, I would be interested. For our religious listeners out there, um, Gedali, what is a bong? No, 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 okay. All right, all right. So here's the question. Here's the question. Let's start with Ben Goldstein. That's it. What do you have to say? The missiles are flying into Israel. Yeah. BB left APEC. He's coming back. What say you? I say that it's a shame. Let me turn this around. Hello, world. It's a shame that it takes a missile to hit the Tel Aviv area in order for the Prime Minister of Israel to pack up his suitcases and fly back home in a huff, in a hurry, to cut everything short. I don't understand why the tens of thousands of our beautiful, magnificent, heroic, patriotic residents civilians, citizens of southern Israel aren't treated with the same amount of respect. They have to absorb like sponges tens of thousands of these types of rockets, mortars, sniper fire, terror tunnels, every sickness including bomb balloons and kites, and nobody gives a damn about it. Yet one rocket hits Tel Aviv, which is horrible. It's still part of our land, of course. Then all of a sudden the world is up in arms. I think that to me is the major issue as far as I can see is how is it possible that it takes one to hit Tel Aviv for the Prime Minister to truly turn the tide around. Alright, so Ben Goldstein says that uh, if it had hit Sderot, same deal, BB would be speaking to APAC right now. Jeremy, what are your thoughts on this? You know, I think it's interesting that it's happening right now right around the elections because... You're the director of the Land of Israel Network, look at the Land of Israel Network. <laughs> I don't know. This is, uh, nothing's new here. I'm looking at you. You asked me the question. I'm looking at Ben. He said, I mean, rockets have been falling on Gaza for years now. 
no one has really found a solution. No one is doing anything. Going into Gaza, coming out of Gaza, blowing up terror tunnels. Now we blew up another building. We blew up another office. I mean, I think that it's time for someone to rise up and be like, all right, it's time to put an end to the Hamas. It's time to put an end to any type of weapons in Gaza. Literally just, it's time to level all enemy lines. Everything there needs to just come to an end. And Israel needs to start. Here's the idea. It's land for peace. That's It's a new peace plan that I would like to offer. If you look all around the Middle East, everyone is falling apart. Syria is falling apart. Lebanon is falling apart. Jordan, if without Israel propping up Jordan, Jordan would fall apart. Egypt is falling apart. The only place that's any st stability for Jews or Arabs is in Israel. So the new land for peace plan is the Arabs should give us their land and we will bring them peace and stability. So we need to take back Gaza and bring peace and stability to Gaza. Then we need to go into Syria and we need to bring peace and stability into Syria. Then we need to go into Jordan and we need to say, listen, we're only here to bring you freedom, peace and stability. If Israel actually took its responsibility of bringing peace and stability to the region, that's the only thing that's gonna stop these rockets and the terror tunnels is for Israel to take a leadership role, but a real leadership role. Not to just worry about the Jews in Tel Aviv or even the Jews that are around stay road and around Otef Aza, but it's actually to take leadership of the entire Middle East and say, we are the leaders here. We are the most powerful economy here. We're the most powerful military here. And we are now going to bring order to the ISIS reality of the Middle East in Israel. That's why we're here. We're All right. Here. So Josh Haston, Jeremy is saying it's time to level them. We have to stop tolerating our enemies who want our complete and total destruction. Why is Israel not doing that? Why is Israel tolerating missiles being shot? No other country in the world would possibly do that. My holy wife, Shayna, shout out to her. She's going to move her dog that is uh, somewhat of an Islamophobe. And, uh, so yes, Josh. Why is Israel tolerating it? That, that, that's the million dollar question. I mean, but people really need to realize something. This has not been going on for two weeks, two months, two years. This has been going on since 2001. You have to remember that the rockets were raining down on the people of Gush Katif in Gaza. 5,000 rockets rained down on Gush Katif. That's before they had the red alert, the Tseva Dome. That's before they had the Iron Dome to protect them. So this has been going on now for almost 19 years, okay? And it's not going away. But one positive development that I have seen in the last several weeks is the fact that it looks like the people in Gaza have had enough of Hamas, okay? And I really think at this juncture, I think that's the way to go. I think that we should support in every way, shape, that we can, we should support those in Gaza who have had enough of Hamas. I am tired of the IDF time and time again going back into Gaza and soldiers being killed in Gaza in order to prop up the Palestinian Authority. And that would be the goal. Let's say Bibi today decides we're going back into Gaza. To go back into Gaza and trade Hamas for Abbas, I think is a terrible mistake. And I don't want, God forbid, any soldiers being hurt just so the Palestinian Authority goes back and retakes Gaza. It's beyond me how the Palestinian fight. Authority has ever even considered moderate when they've killed more Jews they than have, us. They have statistically. I actually did a study of, it's been now several years, I did a study at the, in the midst of the Second Intifada showing, Oslo War, showing that Fatah and the Tanzim were actually more and more, uh, caused more Jewish deaths than even Hamas. But if they're given the keys, if the IDF is being sent in there, and at the end of the day they're given the keys, then it's all for naught. That's why I'm against sending any soldiers into Gaza. I would prop up the people there just like you have these revolutions in other countries, I would prop up the, those citizens of Gaza, the citizens there who do not want to have anything to do with Hamas, realize that Hamas is the source of all their woes, all their problems, why they can't make a living for their family, realize it isn't Israel. I would do whatever I can. If Hamas is brutally oppressing and arresting and beating and shooting those people right now. Okay, I'm not saying those people are Israel lovers or I'm not saying they're Zionists, but I would do something a little bit perhaps radical at the end of the day, which would help them. I would turn off the water. Right now, Israel's not providing you water anymore. We're not providing you electricity anymore. Okay? And people say it's inhumane, it's collective punishment. And in the short term, of course, it would hurt the people of Gaza. I mean, Hamas steals most of the natural resources and the resources which Israel gives to them each and every day anyway. But I would say we are shutting off the valve. We are turning it off altogether. And when the people finally realize this is the result of Hamas, and they'll turn on Hamas, and then let them let them take over. And then eventually down the road, down the road, I would say just to finish off, down the road, I would love to see a resettlement of uh, Gush Katif and the rebuilding of those destroyed communities. But in the short term, I'm not prepared to send anybody else's kid or send kids in there going door to door and the way we're fighting these battles, just so the Palestinian Authority can take over. And 
that's in the back of my mind. I think that's the plan. If in fact there is a plan, even to that degree, we've already been in there three times. They fired people, forget a couple weeks ago, they fired 200, a couple months ago, they fired 250 rockets. That's more than we've gotten here now. So, you know. If the Hamas isn't going to be the leadership, yeah. and the Palestinian Authority can't be the leadership, people need leaders. There needs to be taxes, there needs to be, there needs to be. Who's going to yeah. be the leader? Are we saying that Israel should be the leader? At the end Israel of the day, go back in at the end and of the restore day. order. That's it. There are forces of chaos in the world, and there are forces of order in the world. The only order that is anywhere in this vicinity is the free state and country of Israel. And so Israel needs to take responsibility that we are here and we are meant to bring order to this. And that's region. why I have to disagree with you, Josh. Well, okay. Right? There's a book called The Prince by Machiavelli. He says that when a country does something that would be perceived as bad. You do it quick, you do it fast, and when you do something good, you spread it out over time. Israel does the opposite. For us to cut off their water, it's just providing more and more fodder for media to attack. We should go in there super strong, wipe out Hamas to beyond obliteration, and then we give them water, we give them food, we give them prosperity, we give them all, of the, and we drag that out over time. But that's neither here nor there. We have one second, Avi Abelo. I want you to step in here. We have Avi Abelo. Uh, Avi, Avi Abelo. Of the Israel Video Network. Uh, what, what say you, Avi? Listen, I think we're all we're all saying the same things, just in different ways. The bottom line is as follows: those Arab Muslims who live in Gaza, who truly are interested in peace, will only be able to live peacefully if Israel is in charge. Therefore, Israel must obliterate Hamas, not just for us, but for those Arab Muslims who want to live peacefully. Those who do not live, want to live peacefully with us and they act in such a way, they are either killed, they are either jailed, or they're given financial incentive to move out of there because they're not going to live peacefully with us. And Israel goes back and settles Jewish settlement like we did historically, and life is good there for the Jews, life is good there for the Arab Muslims who want to live in with us, and that's the end result also for Judea and Samaria. And the quicker we do it, the quicker we're going to be helping the whole situation and all of humanity, and we'll be getting the, the rid of this problem called Palestine, which is not a people, which is not a nation, which is not a, 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 board, a country with borders, but it is a cause created to destroy Israel and kill Jews. And we'll be getting rid of that the second we bring back sovereignty and allow those Arab Muslims who want to live peacefully with us to live peacefully with us. So I'm not worried about the demographic problem. Because unfortunately, the truth has to be told, most Arab Muslims who live here, they do not want to live peacefully with us. And they will not, will not accept living peacefully with us. So therefore, they're not going to live here. But those who do want to live peacefully with us will be able to. And we're the best ones to give them peace. I'll be able to for Prime Minister. Um, no, that, that's beautiful. And let's not just forget, we're going to move on in a second, but let's not forget that when Israel went down to Gaza, it was empty, barren, desert, dunes. There was nothing there. And then Israel started, uh, what's it called, the uh, drip irrigation technology, and they literally made the desert bloom. 60% of Israel's organic exports came out of Gaza, and it was blessed. We left, it fell apart. Gaza is clearly the land of Israel. The land feels it, we feel it. Okay. I want to add something else. Yes. Okay. I, I, whenever I look at this uh, sort of, uh, you know, missile, I feel so saddened because, you know, in 67, it, it took Israel exactly six days to wipe out three armies, not with these kind of missiles, with tanks, with jets, with planes, because we had, you know, b belief in what we're doing and we had international... Speak up, we got cameras around. And we had international legitimacy. And today we are fine. we're talking about an organization that this uses only this weapon against such a big country, a developed country, and we don't know what to do with them. And we're talking about you know confrontations of 50 days and and no solution. And and you know it's funny. And they're beating us with I mean, balloons. You're, they're beating us with balloons. What happened? Fucking Paris. What happened to the 67 Israel? What happened to the strong Israel that wiped out armies? So I think our biggest problem today is not the Hamas. Our biggest problem is the legitimacy or the delegitimization that is being done to us, but unfortunately by a lot of our brother Jews in, 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 uh, in, in America. And I know we, we prefer talking about different, it's easier to, to point out the Hamas as the, the bad guys, but I'm following, you know, organizations as If Not Now and Jewish Voice for Peace. And let me tell you, you know, when doing this uh, weekly report, when any small thing happens to, to Palestinians, 
it gets so much attention on their Facebook page. But when Jews, in the last murder last week, the father of 12 kids that was murdered, no. right? Nothing, no mention. And this is the biggest problem. We do not have legitimization to do, to protect ourselves. And, and But do we need legitimization? Meaning if we just do what we need to do, then anyway we're gonna be I called genocide. Yeah. Anyway we're gonna be war criminals. Anyway they're gonna condemn us in the United Nations. What the hell is that? Today's, we just need to do what we need to do. I, I, there's one, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, on the one hand I say, you know, I don't want to use it, but go to hell, all of you. Yeah, I want if to not say, now, then are those people like, right. what do we But on the have? other hand, the, today's war, as we are talking about, is less the war right with, with weapons, is the war of the minds. And, and, and there's a saying that, that the legitimacy you have, you can, the, the further you can go with your tanks is, is how much legitimacy you have. Meaning right. that you do not have legitimacy, you will not be able to start the engine of your tank. And you have, if you have legitimacy, you can use a rock That's and right. win this war. And unfortunately, we are tainted, you guys and me, are tainted as the worst people living on earth and as the biggest aggressors to some people. And we know how lies and misconceptions could lead to very, very, you know, uh, bad uh, All right, results. so we, we need to move on now to the next subject, which is about legitimization, right? We, this past week, uh, Donald Trump said, Golan belongs to Israel. We're legitimized. I want to talk about that for a second, but first let us just thank Lisa Craig. Lisa, thank you for, right? You're giving me a weird look, Gedalia. She, uh, she sponsored <laughs> he the hasn't barbecue. He has eaten anything Thank yet. you so That's much why. for sponsoring well, that. And line. also, uh, not Jenny Craig. Jenny Craig is who I need because of Lily's cookies. <laughs> okay. All right. So, the Golan. This is an issue that, that is happening right now. Trump comes in, says Golan belongs to Israel. BB Prime Minister Netanyahu says it's the Purim miracle. I get nervous about it because when we put so much credit and stock in Donald Trump, which good for him, I appreciate it, who <coughs> says what we already know to be true, then if he says it's not, which there's an upcoming Trump plan, and if he says it's not, does that now mean it's not? I think there's a little bit we have to think twice about thanking people and falling over ourselves for about the Golan? The Golan? Without the Golan, without Judea and Samaria, Israel would be totally indefensible. Completely indefensible, which is why there's this phased desire to pull away Judea and Samaria and the Golan so Israel can be destroyed in phases. But what do you guys think about Trump's declaration? Well, I think it's... Donald Trump is the greatest Speak president up. that Israel has ever had contact with. Wow. He's moved from the embassy to Jerusalem. He pulled out of UNRWA. He stopped funding the Palestinian Authority. He now recognized the Golan Heights. I mean, a little bit of Hakarata Tov. We acted like a little bit of just saying thank you for like, <coughs> we've never had a president like that in the history of any president. Are you not nervous though about this Trump peace plan that's coming up? Making we a big deal? We don't have to do whatever he says, but as long as he's doing things that are right, I think a little hat tip is deserved. Okay, I'm just letting you know that this upcoming Trump peace plan, there's going to be painful concessions on both sides, and that may be your house! Okay? Yeah. So but you think know about what? that. We've seen this before. This isn't a new story. As Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. We've seen Barack try to give up 98% of Judea and Samaria to the terrorists of the PLO. They rejected it. It seems like every time the enemy of Israel, even if they're led by kings of the world, try to once again give away this magnificent land that you see around us, to the enemy of Israel, it seems to fall apart in its path. As much as we should thank a Donald Trump or anybody in his place for once again recognizing what should have been recognized years ago, I mean, how many of us back in the day were out screaming, Ha'am ima golan? We still have those bumper stickers on our cars. At the end of the day, he will present a plan. It will not meet the criteria we want as a Jewish nation. And it will fall apart if that's the case. We didn't come back to this land after 2,000 years just to be ejected from it again. So the truth is, we should thank him. It is due to say thank you to a ruler of the world for siding with the Jewish nation. At the same time, we are a sovereign nation that should be able to make up our own minds in our own ways without the United States president giving us his blessing. I think the Golan was annexed in 1981. Yes, it was. And so imagine how long it's taken for this to actually happen now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to me, the, the, like the, um, the lesson learned, it's time to annex Judea and Samaria immediately. The sooner the better that the world finally just realized that we've come to our homeland and we're never going to leave. 
Jews are called Jews because we are from Judea. We are in Judea. This is where we belong. It's not that this land belongs to us. It's that we belong to this land. It's such an inherent connection. So the sooner the better. And if it's taken since 1981 until now, all right, so if it's 2019, let's annex it immediately and start taking what is deservedly ours. Um, from a historical from a historical perspective, from a legal perspective, um, the Golan is ours. And um, you should go listen to my good self, selfless, uh, self, shameless, self shameless self-promotion. Go to my interview yeah, uh, on the Land of Israel Network with Yisrael Winky Medad, who's an expert on so many different things, the history of the Land of Israel. And I interviewed him uh, yesterday to talk to him about, uh, about the Golan. So again, from the Bible, from ancient times to today, from a legal perspective, and of course from a security perspective, it makes me crazy. I saw on Twitter there were some organizations, I don't know if they were called, I don't know, I don't want to misspeak, I think it was the Jewish Democrats for Israel saying, we recognize the Golan uh, is the state of Israel, but. Uh, was but, there was a but there, but uh, this, is, this isn't the right time, or this, you know, all the different types of excuses, and there are a lot of organizations out there, and I hope I didn't misspeak in terms of labeling who that was, because it makes me crazy. Um, but the Golan uh, will forever be ours, there's no doubt about it. And as you said, uh, Jeremy, I mean, the next step is, I think it has to be like a switch somehow in people's minds. And I think that's what you guys are trying to do out here, is to get people to realize that this is our heart heartland here in Judea and Samaria. And the next step would be uh, to annex this area, to create a real deterrence against the terrorists who are trying to throw us off this land. And it happens each and every day. I mean, we, you can see today there were stone throwing attacks. They attacked a children's bus. Children going to school, it's a clearly labeled bus, and they threw rocks, and rocks can kill. Okay, they and that's do kill. the goal. And they do kill, and they have killed before. Well, we've talked about it before, each and every day. But it, 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 that stuff, it won't, it won't stop until we create a deterrence. And uh, one of the things that has to happen as part of that, in addition to creating deterrence, is fully annexing, just like we did in the Golan in 81, Judea and Samaria. So I agree with you, Jeremy. That is, that is the next step. Gedalia. So I have to jump in. I'm going from the back seat to the front seat. Go ahead, take my spot. Because what I think is, and I think everybody would agree with me here, that we're framing this really wrong. We're talking about this is our land, security. We're talking about people who call themselves liberals, right? Who talk about human rights. They're talking about civil liberties, all these different things. We have to, we have to be able to point out to them that if you're for human rights, you're for civil liberties, then you should be for a liberal democracy to be able to create this rule of law over the land, whether it's Israeli law, or whether it's Danish law, whether it's US law. When you talk about the Golan and annexing the Golan and recognizing the annexation of the Golan, people who are against Trump, they should be celebrating on the liberal side because the borders of liberal democracies has grown. The alternative is that land is gonna be under the control of Assad the butcher, okay? That's the, that's the choice that we have to, I think we have to frame it that way. Whether it's Israeli law or whether it's a law from other liberal democracies, that's their choice. The Arabs living in Judea and Samaria, the Arabs living in the Golan, Arabs living wherever, in, the, in Gaza. We're talking about Israeli law coming over Israeli law to make peace. We don't need Israeli law to make peace. We just need liberal democracy law to make peace. So if there are liberals out there who are calling for a Palestinian state under their own auspices, that they can rule however they want, are they really fighting for what they believe in? They should be fighting for whether it's Israeli law, because we're a liberal democracy, or any other law. But the fact is, is that if they're, if they're standing on, their, on, on the foundations of that I'm a liberal, I'm, 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 I'm for civil liberties, they should be looking for any other rule of law than what the Palestinian Authority could offer, and any rule of law that, that, that Hamas could offer. But we have been saying this to them for years now, and nothing, happened, nothing changed with their perspective, meaning that my conclusion is it's almost impossible to talk to them common sense, to these far left liberals. Right. That's why my question is maybe, and this is something that I, I think we should add, maybe we should be addressing Trump's con constituency, I hope I said it right in English, but those who are becoming, this is a, an a, amazing phenomenon. Okay, uh, you know, I get to meet Christians every once in a while and, and I keep telling them this is an amazing because, you know, even in the books that we read to our children, Christians today are still the bad guys. I mean, we, we, 2,000 years we have been enemies and all of a sudden a group of people, a religious people, they are becoming our best friends and they are becoming 
you know, it's a friendship much deeper than interest. It's a, it's a faith. It's a friendship of faith, and they 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 are so powerful in their faith in in the fact that we are here. And when we say that we are Jews that came back to their homeland, this is all they need to hear. And this is true. And when we say it very, very simple, very clear, they are the most powerful strength today and power that could, uh, 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 you know, cause the president and have caused the president of the United States to act in our favor. So I say, yes, preach to the choir. Talk to those who, who support us. Talk to them in our language. We have the same language. We have the same belief. We are faithful people. We believe in God. We believe in, in the family. We, we believe in conservative values. Let's talk our values to them. And the more we try to talk to these far or left liberals in their language, the more they feel that we are trying to persuade them and they are the ones who are making the decisions. To pander to if, them. They're yes, empowered by right. Them. They're making up their minds. No, no. You're out of the game. You have become totally insane. We're not talking to you. And once you're not talking to them, that drives them mad and you, they should go mad. Giving them that platform is precisely what we shouldn't be doing. Right. And and we have so much power today with so millions of people. A hundred million Christians hundred million. would line up on these hills right now, pitch tents, and make right. certain right. that this is Jewish land. I told my wife. I, wait, 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 wait. A hundred million wait. of them. Not a hundred, five million. Eighty I, million. I told my wife, and I stand behind it, that if one day a war you know, starts here, and you know, it, it, it makes sense, you know, unfortunately. There will be planes of Christians that will come here to Israel to fight side by side with us. Yeah, I grew up with most of them. And, and, and they will come here because this is their belief. Of course we have a lot of disagreement with them, but there's a lot of differences, and this is this is a movement that is just beginning, and there's a lot to sort out, and we can all, always we have to be, you know, kabdel v'chashdeu, very, uh, uh, how do you say it in English? Is there be respectful, but, you know, make sure Cautious, everybody's on the same page. Respect. Cautiously respectful, yes. But this is an amazing phenomenon, historical phenomenon. This is something that our prophets talk about, and this is happening right now. Right now. And we, we are the ones that should be talking about it. We are the ones that should be embracing it. And we are the ones that should be empowering it. Okay, so we have to wind down Amen here. Amen. We have to wind down here. We're not ending it. We're not ending it. We're not ending it. The Trump plan. You brought the Trump plan. Yes. Wait, we're doing another show. Wait, I'm not worried oh, we about the show. Trump plan. I'm not worried at all. We'll they haven't point. said it already. That's okay. If they've said no to everything. Let's just merge there. them. Gedalia, should we merge them? Yeah, I, sorry, sorry. We're I, merging right. them. You go, Avi. Hit him. Goodbye, everybody. I'm going to go back to the barbecue. No, 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 Avi, Avi. We're merging the show. I'm going back to the barbecue. They don't want me. There's going to be a part two. No, here's what I want to say. I just say, before we're okay. winding it down, this is just one message. We're already this talking about part two. This is part two? No, we're about to start a part two. So let me just end part one. Are you sure you want to do a part two? Over We're ending part one. Here's what I want to do. Every once in a while, there's an, uh, an Air Force base about, um, I don't know, maybe a 45-minute drive that way. And every once in a while, you'll see Apache helicopters that fly over here. And sometimes on the bottom of the belly of the helicopter, there's a Jewish star. And I think about where were the Jewish people 75 years ago? Where were we? So some of us were enslaved in Arab countries, and some of us were enslaved in death camps. And we were a scattered, broken, shattered people with no hope and no future. And 75 years later, we have Apache helicopters flying over our heads and the most powerful economy and military in the Middle East. Just give us a little bit more time. The Trump peace plan, all that stuff, just hold on. All of the enemies around us, we're also getting to see the downfall of our enemies as we rise up to the top. Just hold on. Just hold on to this land. Hold on. There's plenty of time. And the trajectory is this. We are going up and up, and our enemies are going down and down. And so anyone that's read that Bible that uh, connects so many Jews and Christians, with the end of the book is clear. The Jewish people are going to win. Jerusalem is going to be a praise to all the nations. And uh, soon, very soon, this world, will, this broken world will be fixed. And that is it for the first episode <laughs> of the Judean Roundtable. Yes, indeed. Jeremy came out with a new, incredible music hey guys. solo. And, uh, hey. What's going on? So that was part one. That was part one of the show. We're going to take a break now and eat. And we're going to come back and do part two. Hope you're enjoying the return of the Judean Roundtable. I know it's been a while since I've been involved. Um, let us know what you think of the show. You can put your comments here. I am going to turn the camera around just so you can check out the view from where we are right now at the top of the 
eastern Gush Etzion overlooking the Judean desert. Uh, it's unbelievable here, so I'm going to stop talking. Okay, I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to turn around. Check out this view. You can see the Dead Sea there behind that tower, the Dead Sea. And check out these mountains. This is Nachal Arugot. People have been to the Masada in Gedi area. Nachal Arugot starts up here in the Judean hills and the mountains. It goes all the way down to the Dead Sea. So this is a beautiful place up here at the top of Gush Etzion. So we are going to eat. You can see the, we're getting ready for a festive barbecue here. And uh, here at the Arugot farm. A lot of good stuff is going on. And uh, we'll come back with part two soon.